What's up everyone, Tom the Dilettante here, and today I'm checking out my first set of MERS handheld radios. MERS stands for Multi-Use Radio Service, and it's one of the publicly available radio services right alongside the likes of CB, GMRS, FRS, and ham radio. And in my opinion, MERS is often overlooked, underused, and potentially underrated. It's not that it's not any good, it's just not as heavily marketed as the other radio services like FRS and GMRS. I did find that a number of commercial entities use MERS radios near me. Walmart, for example, seems to be using MERS frequencies. But on my last road trip out west, I didn't hear anything on the five MERS channels. Maybe MERS is active in your area, but from my experience so far, I'm inclined to think that one of the potential pros of having MERS radio might be added privacy. In other words, security through obscurity. Anyway, before I get into reviewing this radio, let me give you a quick rundown on the MERS service from a US perspective. If you already know about it, you can skip this part of the video using the chapters below. Now, MERS, or Multi-Use Radio Service, uses channels in the VHF portion of the radio spectrum, specifically the 151 to 154 MHz range. This is close to the 2 meter ham band and the US VHF maritime frequencies. And, like GMRS and FRS, it's most commonly used for short-distance two-way voice communication, typically via handheld radios like these RB17V radios Redivis sent me to test and review. With only five channels allocated to it, MERS is probably the simplest of the radio services to use. For comparison, CB is authorized 40 channels, FRS is authorized 22 channels, and GMRS is authorized the same 22 channels as FRS, plus eight repeater channels for a total of 30. Like CB and FRS, MERS is licensed by rule. In other words, you do not need a license to use it. Simply owning an FCC type certified MERS radio gives you license to use it. And there's no age restriction regarding who may operate a MERS radio. So simple to operate radios like these are perfect for just tossing out to friends or family, including kids to establish and maintain short range comms. It's important to note, however, that one of the reasons no license is needed for this service is because of its low power. MERS transmitters, not unlike FRS transmitters, are limited to two watts or less, which means with the provided antennas, don't expect more than a mile or so of communication out of these types of radios. Which brings me to these things, the Redivis RB17V radios. Redivis offered to send me a two pack of these radios to review and share my honest feedback on my channel. I didn't have any MERS radios and the closest thing I have to these are these Midland X Talker FRS radios, so I said sure. In the two-pack box, you get the two radios, two belt clips, two lanyards, two USB-A to USB-C cables, because these radios charge via USB-C, which I think is awesome, and a USB-C power adapter. There's not a lot to the MERS service, so there's not a lot to these radios. From a user point of view, you have a power and volume knob, a channel selector knob that cycles through the five MERS channels, a push to talk button, which is conveniently contrasted with a nice bright orange border, a monitor button that opens a squelch, and for reasons beyond me, an alarm button that seems to come with a lot of handheld radios these days. <coughs> Underneath this dust cover, you'll find a K1 style connector. I don't think this can be used to program the radio. After all, there's not much to program, but you can use this to connect a hand mic like this inexpensive one I have for my Baofeng and Radiodity radios. A nice feature, I think, for an otherwise very simple radio to make it more versatile when using. Beyond what I just rattled off, these particular MERS radios don't have any other features to mess with. There's no power setting, it just has the one. There's no CTCSS or DCS privacy codes to enter. There's no other bands or frequencies to jump to. What you see is what you get. And to be honest, I think this radio's elegance is in its simplicity. They're not waterproof, so you will have to take care in where you're using them. They have a removable antenna, which affords the opportunity to remotely mount and or upgrade the antenna. And really, the only feature I think they're lacking is some means to lock the channel, so users don't inadvertently cut off their comms because they bump the channel selector switch. Operationally, using these radios is about as simple as you can make it. It's the opinion of this Marine that anyone with two brain cells to rub together should be able to operate this radio. The outer knob turns the radio on and off and controls the volume. Turn on the radio. One. There's even an audio cue to let you know what channel is currently selected. The inner knob has five positions, one two, each for the five MERS three. channels. Changing channels is accompanied by another audio cue to let you know what channel you're on, and that's it. As long as the two radios are on, the volume's up, and they're on the same channel, you've got comms. Simply push the push to talk button and begin chatting away. There's even a small indicator light that turns red when transmitting and green when receiving. Now on to the important part. How far can you talk with these things? Well, per my standard disclaimer, the answer to this question is that it varies based on your operating environment. 
Like FRS, GMRS, and most handheld ham radios, MERS communication depends on line of sight. With nothing in between communicating parties, like if you're on open water or flat terrain, getting a good signal at a mile might be easy. However, under different conditions, like if there's a big hill in your way, a half mile might be impossible. One other thing to note, it's not just the natural environment that will affect your operating range. I've seen some videos where folks test radios like these from the inside of their car. Now, if your car is anything like mine, it's practically a Faraday cage. There's enough vehicular RFI and metal between me and another radio that I'm almost guaranteed to have compromised performance. So, the takeaway here is that your best performance will be when your radio's antenna have clear line of sight to one another. Vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle comms with handheld radios should be expected to suffer if you're not using an external antenna or hanging your head out the window. Anyway, I tested these in suburban Chicago, which is relatively flat but has plenty of trees and houses in the way. Here's a couple of excerpts from the two tests I did. One from right within the neighborhood, about three city blocks, and another at over a mile away. For an idea of how these compare to a comparably powered FRS radio, I pit these against my Midland X-Talkers. Check it out. All right, we're gonna test the Redivis MERS radio at about three blocks. Testing the Redivis MERS RV17V radio at about three blocks distance. And for comparison's sake, we're gonna give this Midland X-Talker, it's an FRS radio, a shot to see how well it's received at the same distance. Testing the Midland Extra Talk Channel 16 FRS radio, same distance, about three blocks. As you can see, within the neighborhood, both radios performed admirably. Signal was loud and clear, and I'd say both would get the job done equally well. Let's see how well these perform at over a mile apart. Okay, we're at 1.2 miles, testing the MERS radio first. Testing red... Now we'll test the Midland X-Talker FRS radio, same distance, 1.2 miles, channel 16. Testing Midland... <laughs> miles, testing. In my test, the Redivis MERS radios were able to maintain two-way communication at over a mile, but not without a fair amount of noise and the occasional signal drop. By contrast, the Midland FRS radios didn't make it through at all. Which brings me to the question, what's the difference between FRS and MERS? If they're both license-free radio services with limited power, why choose one over the other? Well, of course, regardless of radio service, there will always be hardware differences. Differences in build quality, antenna performance, etc. will make a huge difference between radios even of the same service. But between FRS and MERS, all things being equal, the main difference is that FRS operates in the UHF, or ultra-high frequency range, of around 462 and 467 megahertz while MERS operates in the VHF, or very high frequency range, of 151 to 154 megahertz. I've read and been told by people smarter than I that higher frequencies, like those of FRS, are better at penetrating obstacles like walls, whereas relatively lower frequencies, like those of MERS, are better at bending around obstacles like hills and other terrain. I'm not an engineer, and I admit this is hearsay, so if you know for certain or have a different take on the differences between UHF and VHF performance, please leave them in the comments for myself and others. So after playing with these things for a while, I gotta say, I do like them. And I wanna thank Redivis for sending a pair my way to check out. Are they going to replace my GMRS handhelds for overland use? No. With limited space, my preference is to have a higher powered handheld with more options at my disposal that can also talk to me and my group's mobile radios. That being said, I still think these are good radios with a lot of practical applications. They're simple, they work, they're inexpensive, and as I said earlier, they're easy enough to use that you can hand them to anyone, an experienced radio operator, your technologically challenged aunt, your kids, or your crayon-eating jarhead cousin. Turn a dial, push a button, and you're good to go. I think these would make a great radio option for any group or family that wants a simple walkie-talkie style radio for everyday use at home or outdoors. They'd also make a great radio for kids, I don't know about you, but I loved my Radio Shack walkie-talkies as a kid, and being MERS, it's likely to be the polite option so as not to interfere with the more commonly used FRS and GMRS services. I for one plan on keeping these in my house for any family radio needs as they arise, like when I need to talk to my wife when I'm working on the roof or in the crawl space. If you'd like to pick up a pair of these radios, you can visit the Redivis website at www.redivis.com. A pair runs 61 bucks on their site as of this video. Two pairs runs 85 bucks, so there's an incentive to get more if you want to equip a larger group. You can also find the four-pack on Amazon for the same price. 
I'm not affiliated with Redivis, but I am affiliated with Amazon. So if you found this video helpful and plan on grabbing a four pack, do me a solid and use the Amazon link in the description. I do get a small commission from that purchase, but it does go towards helping support this channel. So that's it for this one, folks. I hope you learned something or at least found this helpful. What do you think of these Redivis radios? Do you have any experience or opinions on MERS? Feel free to discuss in the comments. And as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please drop those in the comments as well. I'll do my best to answer the questions I get, and I always appreciate the feedback, both positive and constructive. Thank you for watching, and until the next time, this is Tom the Dilettante, Going Clear, 73.